everyone hear me all right? Yep. Yep. Loud and clear. Firmly. Okay. As you desire. All right. So this first little bit is going to be kind of TED talky. So just bear with me. First off, I want to explain to what this training is not. Uh, I call it advanced squad leading training for a reason. Uh, it's not specifically anything that you should take as gospel or anything that you have to do after doing this training. It's just basically just little administrative tips and tricks that I feel you can use to improve your squads. Um, so what this training isn't, this is not Hunter Killers. Uh, I'm not a member of Hunter Killers. Uh, they run pretty sweaty squads. And I'm not saying that what I am teaching you today cannot be used as sweaty squad leading. But this is, I'm not using Hunter Killer tactics. I'm, this is the it, Whatever Hunter Killers teaches their people, I, I am not privy to. So this is... Any, any comparisons are completely accidental. I'm not a member of a Hunter Killers. Um, that being said, this is also not SKL only tactics. So anything that I teach you all here today is not something that, that you need to have only SKL members from or for. Uh, that is because all of our trainings and 90% of our platoons that are not hunter killers are public platoons. So everything that I talk about and I teach are things that I feel are going to be applicable to a public platoon of mostly strength. Uh, that being said, do not expect this to be massive, sweaty stuff. Like, you, you might come out of this thinking that a lot of the things that I talk about are pretty simple for what you would call, quote-unquote, advanced squad leading. And that's simply because I do not think that going overly complicated with public platoons is just something that's going to lead to success. If you, uh, if you try to open the book and teach the written word of some massive document to a bunch of randos, it's probably not going to work out very well. So what I'm going to teach you today is basically what I feel is the maximum you can push a public platoon before they start just not listening to you, or, you know, like not following orders. The more complicated that you try to be, the less of a chance of success you will have. So... First off, I want to explain something called hierarchy, and I know many of you probably know what this means, but in this sense, I just want everyone to be keep in mind the hierarchy of SKL and the hierarchy of your platoon. The platoon leader is on top. The squad leads assist the platoon leads and all with, with uh, direct by directing their squads and by giving advice to the platoon lead if necessary, and. I know that we run pretty fast and loose with a lot of our platoons, but in the through the lens of advanced squad leading, uh, the the best thing that you can do is respect the hierarchy of the platoon. Do not argue with your platoon leader. Do not uh, offer advice when it's not warranted. Do not take your squad rogue without permission. Uh, the the best way to get your squad to be more sweaty, more competitive, more cohesive is to show and prove that there is an established hierarchy within the platoon. So if everything feels like from top to bottom it is working like a well-oiled machine, everyone will kind of fall in line. And that is going to come into play with some of the things that I'm going to talk about during this training. Now, another thing, and this is the first actual thing that, that we're going to, is going to be a tip and tricks. Make sure that you have your fire team uh, voice key bound to something. For instance, I'm talking in diamonds right now, so only Horus, I Am No Tree, and HGBM can hear me. Make sure that your fire teams are, are, are used, because for advanced squad leading, what we are going to be doing is we are going to actually be making use of fire teams. And, I, and for most public platoons that are casual to mid-tier, mid Fire teams are not used. Like, they're just a thing that happens. Someone might say, oh, hey, there's a Sunday on Diamond's Waypoint, because they just happen to be Diamond's fire team leader. But there's, but most of the time, people do not use fire team for anything. And we are actually going to be making use of fire teams today. The, the primary way I feel like you can take your squads to a, the next level is by organizing them better. Uh, and, and by better, I don't mean... You know, going super in depth with all four fire teams, but just making do, making use of what you can. 
So, everyone make sure that you have your fire team's comms uh, key bound to something that you can easily reach, because we are going to be using fire team comms for the exercises. Go ahead and test them out. Hello. Test, test. Yep, yeah, there we go. Yep, yeah, I see HCBM and the I Am No Tree are talking in diamonds. The heart, it hearts nice and good. Uh, that good. Yep, can hear you. Although the audio is extremely quiet. Yeah, I might just have to uh, turn people up manually or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go go more into detail. Just make sure you have your fire team key bound at some point, because well, we still just need to talk over a couple things. So, the reason I brought up hierarchy a moment ago is that is that the first step to increasing the competency and the cohesion of your squads is to add another layer of, of to the hierarchy that does not already exist. So in this instance, you have your platoon lead, and in most platoons you'll have four squad leads, and the squad leads can be somewhere between casual to pretty hardcore. So we're going to take hardcore to another level administratively. We're going to add another level of hierarchy, and I know a lot of you have been in this situation, so I'm just going to go ahead and explain uh, how this works. There are many platoons that we are in that are just full of brood lords and hive lords and swarm lords, and we to the point where we actually have a platoon lead and you know three other squad leads just filled out, and then there's just random you know other brood lords not doing anything. I'm going to introduce uh, something called the ASL or the assistant squad lead. So in this instance, I am the squad lead of Alpha Squad, and if I am trying to make a more competitive, more uh, focused Alpha Squad, I am going to, we're going to be using just two fire teams, but we're going to be using diamonds and hearts for this. You can use whatever two you want, but I like diamonds and hearts just because they're easy to say and easy to say. So every, every person that joins this squad, I am going to even evenly disperse between Diamonds and Hearts fire team. So you all look in the bottom left, you can see that you are an Alpha squad, and you can see that who is in Diamonds fire team and who is in Hearts fire team. In this instance, my ASL would be whoever wants to be it. In, the, in this instance, it's Niku Piku. Um, and the, the assistant squad lead just does exactly what you, th what you think it does. You are just placed in the hierarchy below the squad lead. So in this instance, let's say the platoon lead put Alpha Squad Waypoint on this triple stack, right? I would then go into squad comms without, without, without getting in the way of the platoon lead talking in platoon chat, where we're, we're using comm discipline here. I would just go into squad comms and I would say, okay, Alpha Squad, we need to take this A-point triple stack. Uh, diamonds, diamonds take the ground floor. Arts take the second floor, get on point. And in that instance, we would just fall into fire team comms for just a moment, and I would, and you know, Niku would say, "All right, uh, Hearts people, get up to the second floor, get around the point, while while Diamonds controls the cent the ground floor." And I would just put the dim the Diamonds people onto various doors or whatever. And it's not a ton of talking; it's not any extra talking. It, it's more just dispersing the talking and dispersing the cohesion where it needs to be, rather than giving vague instructions to the whole squad. Because you'll find often during point holds and and uh, attacks and stuff like that that you give your full squad the job that they don't need. Uh, Twelve people are not necessarily needed to go, you know, hack a terminal or destroy a point or whatever. But when we're in the situation where it would be too difficult to pick out, like it, it's a whole lot easier just to say hearts go do this rather than me pick out I don't know Bjorn. Over 9,000 in Venues, go do this. So, just ad administering it ahead of time makes it a whole lot easier to kind of give an idea of what you need to do and, and who you can split off squads to. So, in this instance, you don't have to say all of Alpha Squad get on A point. You can just say Diamonds get on A point. Hearts go a little bit further ahead, go, so go into this pre placed uh, position and hold there and then fall back. Does anyone have any questions about this concept before we move on? Uh, would you keep it just the two, or would you have three, or is that too much? I, I would keep it just the two, and, and remember, I'm looking at everything as simple as possible. I think that the average person can understand that we are splitting the, the squad of 12 into half. Like I, I feel like that, that is the maximum that you should do. I think that if you split it into three or four, you're also going to be 
getting too few people for certain jobs. Because six people can do almost anything in this game, as long as it's not, you know, crashing like a massively held point or whatever. But small, little objectives that, that a squad is given, six people can handle. Now, if we're talking about four people or three people, it starts to get a little bit more dicey. I would not attack Split Peak Pass and then put four different fire teams on it, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, on each point. But if we're attacking Split Peak and the platoon lead knows that Alpha Squad is super cohesive, I might be able to say, uh, platoon lead, I'll take B and C. I'll put a fire team on B and I'll put a fire team on C. You just put two thir or two thirds of the platoon on, uh, you know, on C and, and D and stuff or uh, A and D and stuff like that. So this is basically. Dispersing your numbers a little bit more efficiently between objectives. And uh, in this case, calm discipline is key. And I know we've kind of talked about this uh, in prior, and th it's definitely something that we just need to do a training on. But when the platoon lead is talking, do not talk over him, unless it's just to reaffirm what he is saying. Same thing for the ASL. Like, Niku, if, I, if the platoon lead says, Alpha Squad, you go here... And I say, okay, Alpha Squad, hearts go here, diamonds go here. Uh, then Niku talks. And then if I start talking, Niku quiets. And then if, if the platoon lead starts talking, I start to quiet. And once the platoon lead's done, I talk again. And then when I'm done, Niku talks again. And if it's an emergency, feel free to talk over whoever. Like, if, you know, if someone's breaching a, a hearts, fire team hearts' is a point, Niku can, over, can interrupt me by saying, hold the point, hold the point, doors, you know, do, North door, north door, as long as it's in fire team uh, comms, because I can't hear them. So you need to make very clear what comms you are talking in. Uh, do I, as a squad lead, do not need to, talk to direct Alpha Squad in platoon chat. And Niku does not need to direct fire team hearts in squad chat. That's what the fire team comms. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Now, this is not something that's always going to happen. That, Like I said, this is kind of in a situation where we just happen to have a lot of Broodlords or hive lords and Above in a platoon, and you want to take your squad to the next level. Um, that being said, this is something that you can do with randos. You can just explain to people, hey, I'm splitting my squad up into two fire teams of six, and while we do not really have an assistant squad lead for hearts, if you're in hearts, I will give you a directive. And you and just just follow the hearts directives. I know you're not going to have boots on the ground instruction, but just go where to, go to where I want hearts to be. And this works in the exact same way that when we run a platoon and there's not really like a delta lead, it's just someone holding it. And you still give delta squads instructions. You just don't expect like them to be led on the ground as much as as they could be if they had an actual lead. You still can use this organizational method uh, to your advantage. It's just better if you have an assistant squad lead, but you don't you don't need one to do it. Okay, so moving on from there, uh, this is more or less everything that I have. Uh, a lot. We're going to go into some more like boots on the ground stuff, like how like how I would use this type of organizational method or whatever, but this is more or less what I consider to be the maximum that you can do in a public pu public platoon. If you want to take your squads to the next level, split them up into two fire teams of six, get someone to volunteer as an assistant squad lead, and establish the hierarchy, establish calm discipline, and people will start falling in line, especially once you start winning. Uh, I mean, like, go, going back to the split peak uh, example, if you actually can get two fire teams to hold two points on Split Peak Pass, you will get everyone on board for this idea. Like everyone in your squad that might have been, you know, not going exactly where you wanted them to go, or like not or not following the fire team's uh, leaders' directives to the letter, will start doing it because they start seeing the merit in the idea. Uh, I know it seems simplistic, but it actually does have a lot of depth to it, and we're going to. Go over that depth. Oh, hey, the continent's open right now. And there's a Whiskey Storm Corps Bastion. We're not going to worry about the Bastion. Alright, so, let's uh, let's all make our way back to the warp gate. Just go ahead and hit the U key. We're going we're gonna to do our first little exercise here. Is 
Is uh, this open for the public, John? Yeah, yeah. We're just doing advanced squad leading training, so it's just, it's just training. You but... know the squad's full, right? Yeah, well, it's squad leading training, so I, I don't know if I want a second squad. Oh, ah, okay. We might open it up for, like, practice or whatever, but while I'm going through some drills, we'll just uh, keep it to one squad. Oh, I need to do an outfit message for Angel. Uh, Angel Darkness is setting up a squad to take down that Bastion. Feel free to put an X in the chat for the invite. Okay. Oh, so. I realize there's a Bastion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bastion just got pulled. Okay, so what we're going to do, now that I've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Valk drop. And I still I see the I Am No Tree already has a Valk drop. So this actually makes Valk drop super easy. Um, a Valk can have six people in it, and we're splitting the squads up into two teams of six. So all we need is a fire team Hearts Valkyrie and a fire team Diamonds Valkyrie. So fire team Hearts get into Niku's Valkyrie, and fire team Diamonds can just go ahead and get into I Am No Tree's Valkyrie. And once people get used to this idea, it actually makes Valk drops a whole lot easier because, you know, only six people can get in it and you don't know who is pulling the second Valkyrie if you're calling for a Valk drop for your for your squad. So now we know someone in Diamonds needs a Valkyrie up and someone in Hearts needs a Valkyrie up. And just for simplicity, we're going to go into a, a live fire situation. Let's just go to Split Peak Pass. So let's go ahead and get the Valkyries off the ground. We're going to go to Split Peak Pass.